Good morning, my friends. This is Pastor Stephen Brooks. Welcome today to our online internet around the world church service. And I'm so glad that you are here today. Praise the Lord. And as you would expect, my friends, I've got tremendous news. I want to let you know that the funds have come in to be able to pay off the land, the field of dreams, completely. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just before going into the weekend, I spoke with our attorney, and uh, he is drawing up the papers so that we can make one final lump sum payment to the lender, and we will then hold the title to the land, the title deed, praise the Lord. But the money is in the bank, and we are going to pay that land off. Praise God. Lift your hands and rejoice. My friends, working together, we did it. Praise God. God has done a great miracle. God has worked through his precious people. That would be you that are watching. And together we can rejoice because God's property, the Field of Dreams, 14.5 acres, right next to the airport, prime property. My friends, uh, within just a few days will be paid off. Praise the Lord. But the money is in the bank. We've got it. Praise the Lord. God is faithful to his word. Praise God. So, uh, in light of that, let's look at a scripture. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, because this, watch this, this is for you. It says, give, and that's what so many of you have done. Jesus said, give, and it will be given to you. Now, Jesus said, give, and over the Feast of Tabernacles, the giving came in from all over America, and from even around the world. Praise the Lord. Actually, one of the last special offerings that came in that pushed us over actually came in from Kenya. But the giving came in from all over America and uh, different nations of the world, and I am just so thankful. You know, it was also very interesting because while, of course, there's always you know, the smaller donations, the $20, the $100, people that are giving their best. There were those of you that caught that revelation that when I taught that little message that Jesus counts by thousands, remember that in one of my messages, Jesus uh, uh, and, you know, God counts by thousands. In other words, he mentions the, the cattle on a thousand hills. Solomon gave a thousand burnt offerings, and I gave some of the different examples of how God counts by thousands. And some of you had already given some of your offerings, like, for example, somebody gave 600. He came back. After hearing that message, and he bumped it up, gave another $400 and pushed it over into the thousand. First time ever. He was a college student. First time ever to give a $1,000 seed. And others caught it too. Some, there were a few people that gave $700, but when they heard me teach that, they bumped it up $300 more so wide. They could get into that breakthrough category of the thousand. Praise God. And then we had others that did larger gifts than that. All said and done, everything coming together, we hit it. Praise God. We did it. Praise the Lord. And we did it together so you can rejoice because the breakthrough for this ministry flows into your life, that anointing where God's going to do some amazing things to you. So give, okay, I know there's a whole group of people that know what it is to practice this. Give, now watch this, and it will be given to you. Now, what's, what's amazing is that you can sow to the east, but God can cause you to reap from the west or from the north or the south. So when you sow, God can bring it back to you from many different angles, many different avenues, and not just your work, not just your job, which can be a primary source of God blessing you, but your job is the area through which you get seed and your harvest can come back in many different ways. And let me say also that one of the ways that your harvest can come back is not necessarily just, you know, like somebody perhaps handing you a check or maybe a relative blessing you with a new car or who knows. But sometimes the way that God gives back into your bosom is through a supernatural idea 
or an insight, a way to invest, or a way to start a business, or an idea for a new product. And the next thing you know, that thing is moving forward, it's got traction, and uh, you're coming into new levels. Praise God. But you could already have a business, and God could put His super upon your natural. You know, I just spoke uh, in London, England just recently, and uh, we had been there a few years back and ministered. And one of the women uh, that belongs to the church, she's very anointed, a street preacher, loves Jesus with all of her heart. And at that time, uh, she had 500 employees. Now, I told my wife, I said, I said, watch. I said, when we go back uh, and we were flying over on the plane, I told my wife, I said, watch, when we go back and get there, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if she now has 1,000 employees. And I feel that she does. And so when we went back, I saw her, and I said, uh, there in the church, I said, how's your business doing? She said, good. She said, Pastor Steve and I now have over 1,000 employees. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you give, God will give to you. And so it's just, he can do it through all kinds of ways, just by overwhelming your business, where you are in a rush to find qualified employees that you can hire. I'm just telling you, God can put it on thick and he's going to, you've done your part. You have given, I want you to get ready to receive God's blessing into your life as he's going to pour into you give, and it will be given to you. So God's going to pour into it, uh, into you. And this is how he does it. Good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. So your bosom is the area where back in the ancient biblical days, you would wear a robe and you would have a belt around, you know, your waist. And then you would take the lower part of the robe and you would bring that up and grab the end of it with your hands. And it kind of forms like a, the kind of like a big towel, like a beach type towel. And, uh, and so when you're at the market and you're ready to get your grain, then that person would pour in into your bosom, into this area that you've kind of like made like a big holding thing with, with your, um, with your garment. And that person would pour in a good measure and then kind of press it down uh, so that you can compact it and then shake it so it can settle and you can get just as much in there possibly and then even running over. That's how God's going to pour into your bosom. You have sown and God is going to give you a running over blessing. Praise the Lord. Now, if, if this is the first you've heard of this, of course, we have cleared now the Feast of Tabernacles. God's still stirring you. Go ahead and sow. Praise the Lord. But I know I'm speaking to the majority who heard the clarion call and you rose up and you gave and God's going to give you the overflowing the uh, running over blessing for with the same measure that you use it will be measured back to you and so many of you you measured it out in a very generous in many ways even sacrificial type way watch what God's going to do by the way those that had commitments that maybe gave a certain amount but pledged the rest everybody got their pledges in absolutely off the charts what God did. All the money is now in the bank. I've talked to the attorney. He's drawing up the paperwork. We will pay off that remaining balance. And I will stand in this pulpit and I will hold up the title deed and I'll show it to you. Lift your hands one more time and give God praise. Amen. Because listen, as your international pastor, I'm speaking to you and I want you to know I've got great joy in my heart because I know it's coming to you. A wallop of a blessing, a running over blessing is going to be poured into your life. And you know what it's going to do? It, are you ready for this? It's going to produce a greater harvest, which will do what? It's actually going to give you more seed. It's going to give you more seed. Some of you went to new levels with your giving. You haven't seen anything yet. You wait till you see what God's going to do for you, and you'll be coming back with an even greater seed. Why? Because we go from glory to glory. We go from strength to strength. And you have broken through into a new level. I say that by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So prepare your hearts to receive God's best because he's going to be poured into you. And at the same time, we know that the tithe, which is 10% of all of our increase, 10% of our income, the tithe always belongs to the Lord. It's holy. So let's bring the tithe into the storehouse of the Lord today. Amen. Now, if you're going to mail in your tithe, your offering, please send it to Stephen Brooks International, P.O. Box, 
717 Moravian Falls, North Carolina. Our zip code here is 28654. Woo, glory. Now, if you're bringing in your tithe, your offering online, please go to the website, stephenbrooks.org. When you get to our webpage, look up top. There's a header that says Give Online. And you can click that. It takes you to the giving page. And there, you'll see the link for the tithe. And there, you'll see links for special offerings if you would like to give beyond the tithe. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Mm -mm. God's lifting you to higher levels. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. The spirit of rejoicing is here. Woo. Praise the Lord. Amen. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Your morning is here. Praise God. Hallelujah. God's showing himself strong on your behalf. Now, Father, as your people are honoring you with their tithes, and as many have given sacrificially over the Feast of Tabernacles, oh, God bless them. I thank you that you are pouring into them. They meet the qualifications that that Jesus laid out, which were to give, and they have done that. And now you're going to see that men give into their bosom, and there's going to be ideas released to your people. There's going to be increase released to your people. The anointing of wealth and the anointing of increase is touching them now in a greater dimension. Father, we give you all of the praise. We give you all of the praise. And Father, we thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus for causing the field of dreams to be paid off. You are a mighty God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And around the world we say, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let's take our Bibles today. I want us to go over to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 61. Let's drop down to verse 7. Let me grab a drink of hot tea here just for a moment. Praise the Lord. I want to talk today about something that is a little bit hard to describe. Maybe it's better caught than taught, but I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to teach it, and you're also going to catch it. Some of you have had a touch of this before, and you're about to get uh, a whole lot more. I'm talking about joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. The reason it's unspeakable, it's, it's like inexpressible. And uh, you, can't, you can't even really find the words to express it, but we're going to talk about this today. We are in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 7. Let's pray. Father, as we explore your word, we thank you for wonderful discoveries that we make. Today, Father, let there be the unveiling of a deeper understanding of the fruit of the Spirit known as joy. And we thank you, Father God, for righteousness, joy, and righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We thank you for this flow of being, receiving the anointing, the oil of joy. Now, we thank you, Father, that it's flowing even right now in Jesus' name. Woo! Amen. I tell you, I'm still, I'm so excited about God's harvest for you. <laughs> I am so excited about God's harvest for you. God, listen to me. God's going to make you laugh. Mm -mm. God's going to make you laugh with a hilarious laughter of such ecstatic joy. And it's going to, it's going to reverberate. Watch. Praise God. Now, Isaiah 61 verse 7. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. What are you ready for this? Watch. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. The everlasting joy, the same type of joy that the saints in heaven experience is something that can be birthed in your heart where you have the baptism of joy. And before you ever get to heaven, you already know what that is. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Here we actually see that possessing your inheritance is tied to the experience of having everlasting joy. 
See, it says, they shall rejoice in their portion, therefore in their land. So this is where these things happen. This is how the joy is tied in. It's tied into your inheritance. Praise God. And I see you fully possessing the inheritance that Jesus has purchased and paid the full price for, for you to receive and enjoy. Praise God. You know, my friends, I've noticed over the years that though, that those Christians that, that lean towards depression, they're easy victims, they're easy targets for the devil. So your joy determines the depths and the heights that you can excel in Christ. Praise God. And I believe today that any spirit of depression will be broken off you as you listen to the anointed word brought to you today. Praise God. Now the Apostle Paul also put a great emphasis on this as we see in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 where he said rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice. Oh, Pastor Stephen, that's easy for him to say he was such a great apostle. But he had so many challenges. He had so many things to overcome. But with Paul, every challenge he turned into a testimony. And he even proclaimed in the book of Romans the great uh, treaty on the theology of the new covenant. He even said that you are more than a conqueror. What is a conqueror? It's when you meet somebody of equal strength on the battlefield and you overcome them. But more than a conqueror is when you go up against adversaries, circumstances, opponents that are bigger than you, but because Christ is in you and that activation is there of faith and power and strength, you still overcome. That means you are now what? More than a conqueror. Praise God. So Paul had many challenges and he overcame and he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And he put the double emphasis again. I will say rejoice my friends. If if Paul can make statements like this while in a prison, I'm telling you what, when we know who we are in Christ and we know uh, our inheritance and we're taking the land that God has given to us, we can rejoice all the way to heaven. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, 1 Thessalonians, Paul raises the bar. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, rejoice always. Now he says also right after that, pray without ceasing. That means that we need to be in an attitude of prayer continually, but also in an attitude where we are always rejoicing. Oh yes, we have many opportunities. I know that you do just like I do every day for something to pull us out of that. But we have to be careful that we don't let anger or frustration or some type of uh, depressing report pull us out of that uh, joy. Because this is an everlasting joy that is eternal. And that's what we're tied into. Our citizenship is not here on this earth in the sense that, you know, we're strictly limited to being either Americans or British or Japanese or, you know, Nigerian or, uh, you know, uh, Portuguese or whatever it might be. No, our citizenship is in heaven. That's why we can have that unbreakable link of joy in our lives. Praise the Lord. You know, God will never ask you to do what he has not called you to do or what he has not given you the grace to do. That's why you can walk in joy. Some people get themselves over in situations that God did not call them into. And suddenly the joy begins to evaporate and they find themselves struggling and sweating, trying to drive a round uh, peg through a square hole and it doesn't fit. Uh, and there's no grace for that. But when you are in the flow that God has for you, there is always an understanding underlying river of joy that you can flow in. Praise God. Now let's look at this in Psalm 51. Praise the Lord. We are hitting over the Psalm 51 and this will be a verse, verse, whoops, different one there. Psalm 51 verse 12. Praise God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Restore to me the joy of 
of your salvation. Joy, my friends, is centered around salvation. Actually, joy is a part of the redemptive package that Jesus purchased for you at Calvary through his shed blood. Praise God. So you need to always stay close to the cross, always embrace the cross, because while it's rugged, amen, there's joy, amen. There's joy at the new birth experience. Now, there's more. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the oil of joy will actually increase upon your life. Mm -mm. You mean there's different levels of joy, Pastor Stephen? Yes. <laughs> yes, you better believe it. Mm -mm. Now, let's go very close by. Psalm 45. Psalm 45, let's go to verse 7. This would be messianic in nature because we know that this uh, prophetically would be speaking of Jesus Messiah. Verse 7, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, now, whenever in Scripture you see the word therefore, you should ask yourself, what is that there for? Okay, that is pulling together the statements that were just made and condensing that. And it's saying, because of what was just spoken, therefore, this is why this is the way it is. In other words, if you love righteousness and you hate wickedness, my friends, you need to live right. You need to live for Jesus. And the things that God said, don't get involved in, stay away from it. And the things that God said, it's okay, enjoy yourself. Live right. Love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you. How? With the oil of gladness, more than your companions. Look, I don't want to go off and see some old raunchy, nasty movie with cursing, nudity, and profanity where God's holy name is blasphemed. I don't want anything to do with that, but I'll tell you what I do want. I want the oil of gladness. I want the oil of joy. And you get it more when you love righteousness and you hate wickedness. Mm -mm. Joy, joy all over you. The oil of gladness just poured on you. And you're happy. You're happy when everybody else is depressed and sad. <laughs> you're happy when the weather is cloudy and rainy. And you're happy when the weather is sunny. You're not moved by external circumstances, but you are flowing in that river of the oil of joy. And it's very very real in a very dark and depressed world. It makes you stand out even more. Mm -mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, we have Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God, that's the kingdom that you belong to. You're no longer in the kingdom of darkness. You're now in the kingdom of light. By the way, there's a lot of laughing and a lot of joy in this kingdom. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. That would be very, very limited. But righteousness and peace and joy, how? In the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm. You don't have to be sober in church. You don't have to act like you just uh, drank uh, lemonade without the sugar. Amen. But my friends, that joy bubbling up on the inside of you can produce a holy laughter uh, and a freedom. A freedom of expression where that joy of the Lord wants to get out. And it's, whoo, it, it's, like, um, it's like a bursting out of it. Like grape juice, praise God. And you don't want to be in, wow, I'm smelling cinnamon right now. Glory to God. God's cleansing people right now. You're getting free. You're getting set free from that spirit of heaviness. It's breaking off of you right now. And you're actually starting to kind of get happy. Even some of you are getting a little bit inebriated right now. Keep on drinking. Keep on listening. I'm pouring the, the, the wine of the spirit, the new wine into you right now. Praise the Lord. But you can't be an old wineskin. The old wineskins can't handle it. They are grumpy and they're in a bad mood and they want everybody else ha uh, unhappy like they are. Rigid and stiff. And not pliable. That's because the old wine skins can't handle the new wine. And the new wine, uh, it, it, it wants to expand. And, and it's fresh. Oh, you got to have a fresh wine skin. Mm, glory. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Go with me, Acts chapter 2. And some of you are going to get a little bit free. Amen. 
Some of you have been a little bit too dignified. Now, yes, there, there is a dignity in the Holy Spirit. I tell you, I'm really smelling cinnamon. Smells, uh, smells like that big red chewing gum. Mm, some of you are getting hot, hot, hot right now. Praise the Lord. Uh, and you need to get uh, delivered from a spirit of religion where you can't dance uh, in the Lord. You can't praise freely in the Lord. You need to get free. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 2, verse 6. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these uh, who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? And now let's go to verse 12. So they were all amazed and perplexed. Come on. It's time for some more of that where God works through you in such a way where people, your co-workers and people around you, your relatives, uh, maybe even those that snickered uh, because of your faith in God. Uh, suddenly they, they're amazed and they're perplexed because you've had such a magnanimous breakthrough and there is so much rejoicing and joy going on in your house and in your world and in your life. They're just like, what, what in the world's happened? Look at what's going on. Praise God. I'll tell you what, you get drunk in the Holy Spirit, you get full of that new wine. Yeah, people start looking. You better believe it. Mm -mm. So they were all amazed and perplexed, and they're going to be amazed and perplexed when they see what God does to you. Amen. Saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. They're having their moment. They caught the glory train. They caught the train. Hallelujah. I tell you, when my wife and I were leaving uh, uh, a certain train station in England, uh, Barrack upon Tweed, going back to London, we caught the train. Guess what? The train came one minute early. The tra and those trains run sharp on time. The train came one minute early, and we got on the train, and the train literally departed right at the moment when it was supposed to be like there. It's like, but it was only there for like five seconds, but it came just a little bit early, and foot like five seconds when it pulled in, whoop, after that starts moving. And it was, and of course, it only takes a few seconds for those trains, and they're going so fast, they're already up to, you know, 60, 70 miles per hour. And as we were pulling out, pulling out quick too. This guy's coming down the stairs and he gets there and as the train's leaving and me, I, my wife and I saw the expression on his face. He was like, ah, and he was so frustrated and aggravated. He missed, he missed the train, but listen, you will not miss the glory train. There is a lot of sifting and shaking that the Spirit of God is doing right now. Where you see a lot of stuff in church that's being propped up and held up. And it's all silliness. And God knows it is. And maybe it's even being celebrated. Don't worry about it. God's sifting and shaking because the glory is about to come. And the glory knows where to go. And those that are over here goofing around, they're not going to catch the glory train. They may act like this or that. But... God's anointing knows where to flow. It's not random. It's not like it just falls. It falls to those that are preparing for it, that are ready for the glory. And it's going to come all over you. Hallelujah. And it is going to cause people to have the same expression of amazement and perplexing where they'll say, how come it's coming to you? But you know why it's coming to you. This is what you live for. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. Amen. There is such a strong smell right now of cinnamon in here. It's like um, it's being held like a liquid vial is being held under my nose, being stirred. And God is, see, cinnamon also represents creation. The creation of new things is actually the fragrance of, uh, of creation. And God is birthing a new season in your life right now. I'm, I'm telling you, you have broken through to a new level. You have already broken through to a new level. Amen. This is your time to rejoice and be happy. Praise the Lord. Amen. I see you on the train. You caught the train. You caught the glory train. Amen. Train's already moving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 
We see here in verse 14 that Peter had to explain it because in 13 uh, uh, others mocking said they are full of new wine. In other words, they're, they're drunk. But Peter standing up with the 11 and it could be possible that the reason they're standing up is maybe they were laid out. And Peter kind of gets up and sees, you know, everything that's being said and jumps in there to give an accurate report. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them. Now, remember, this was the guy that previously uh, was yielding to fear and even cursed and denied the Lord. And look at the difference of what the Holy Spirit makes in the life of a man or woman of God. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose. See, uh, it's only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we have many people that inquire about the unusual joy we have. My wife and I were in the back of a taxi, and uh, while we were in England, and a man was basically kind of, the driver was kind of like inquiring of, uh, you know, he got, he got on the subject of all the different bars and taverns, and uh, Pastor Kelly said, well, we drink at Joel's bar. He's like, well, what's that? She said, that's the, that's the bar of the Holy Spirit mentioned by the prophet Joel in the Bible, and the conversation, as you can imagine, whoop, went in the totally different direction and the Holy Spirit began to move hallelujah and you got to drink the new wine praise the Lord there's there's a couple of things that really catch uh, uh, and almost like uh, jolt unbelievers one of them is being filled with the Spirit and that supernatural joy the other is when you are bold enough to carry your Bible you want you want to freak out unbelievers walk into the hotel and go up in the elevator with your Bible in your hand boy you you think I mean people they don't know what the, that man's got a Bible yep it's a Bible don't be afraid it won't blow up <laughs> Woo! you want to get a reaction though walk around in public today with a Bible mm, you don't even have to say anything. People know what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like if you just say, if you, it's almost like if you uh, just said, glory, everybody would just like run, run. Ooh, he's got a Bible. Ooh. And, and let the elevator door close with the big Bible. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I, eyeballs get that big. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, my friends, this, again, is uh, a new higher level of joy. They had the joy in the Old Testament, but that grape juice in the Old Testament, the grape was a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit. And you can just keep on drinking of the Holy Spirit. There is a divine intoxicating, so different from alcohol. Alcohol kills your brain cells. Alcohol causes you to lose control of yourself. But the Holy Spirit coming upon you is such a powerful, beautiful, holy thing. And I have had the Spirit come on me so strong before I have collapsed where I could not even stand up. And every time that has happened, there would be like a laughter that would burst out of me with so much joy. Praise the Lord, like a force of joy that I think if I would have tried to have held it in, uh, I don't know what would have happened. But I didn't want to hold it in. I let it out. And there's a point also, you just don't care. When it is truly, authentically of God, you don't have to apologize for uh, to anybody for anything that God does. When the Holy Spirit is really moving, you don't ever, ever have to apologize for God. Well, excuse me, we want to apologize. No, 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 no. This, if this is of God, uh, it, it's of God, and uh, either get in or, you know, or miss it. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm preaching to a group of the happiest people on the planet who know the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You know, I was talking with Dr. Wade Taylor years back, and he told me about this one prophetess, very anointed, and she was from Wales, and she came over to America a lot to minister. She, she was never like what we would call like really well-known, like a super famous minister, but she was, a, she was an absolute prophetess. She could really, really like 
catch that flow of the Spirit and then just push it. And uh, mo in most of her meetings, people ended up getting completely drunk in the Holy Spirit. One night, the whole church got so drunk that hardly anybody could function. And when it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, they decided we'd better leave. And they all stood up, and they were trying to go through the door together. And the Spirit fell in such power, they all fell together. The door opened, and they all just began to fall out the door. And uh, people suddenly started coming into the church. And uh, people came in and they realized suddenly this is a church. They thought, we thought this was a bar. We, th we saw all of y'all falling out. We thought y'all were drunk. And we came in here to <laughs> get drunk with you. <laughs> but of course, people then end up coming under the power of the Spirit, getting convicted, getting saved. And look, you just go with the flow. It could lead to somebody's salvation. And they could end up being in heaven forever because of your willingness to be flexible, to be a new wineskin in the Holy Spirit. Very quickly, let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 16. Your words were found, and I ate them. By the way, that is a very real experience. I've had it. My wife has had it where a scroll was put into her mouth and she ate it. Uh, John the Revelator had it. That could happen to you. Okay, so these are very real experiences. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy, the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. You know, men and women who move in revelation, such as what we're seeing right here, those who find the word, men and women who move in revelation, they don't run out of joy. That is something that I've seen continually, that if you are in a fresh flow of revelation, and you're making new discoveries in the word continually, you're always up. That's what the word will do for you. It will infuse you with supernatural joy. So we see that there is joy in salvation. We see there's a higher level of joy through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And my friends, there is joy through discoveries, through revelation of the Word of God. Now, your redemption is your complete escape from a world that in many ways is very, very depressed. Mm -mm. Right now, if there is, listen, if there is any spirit that would be trying to depress you. Right now, I curse and break that spirit off of your mind. I break it off of your life. I break it off of your, off of your family. Go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Woo, glory to God. And freedom is happening right now. Shackles and chains are breaking right now. Praise God. The anointing removes the burden and destroys the yoke. The anointing is working on your mind. You go free now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And you don't have to be depressed anymore. Praise God. Nobody's got, listen to me. From this day forward, no longer will people be coming up to you very like, kind of quiet like, and saying, hey, uh, what's wrong? Those days are over because there ain't going to be nothing wrong. Doesn't mean you don't have challenges, but no more of this self-pity where you're so depressed that people have to come up and say, what's wrong? What do you need? Praise God. I see you going up to people now and saying to them, looks like you're having a tough time. What do you need? I want to pray. Praise God. And just pray for them. Praise the Lord. No more victim. No more victim mentality. But a child of God filled with the Spirit and full of joy. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. My friends, revelation of the Word builds faith. And faith steers you into abundant joy. Now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Verse 8. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm. This is speaking in reference to Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen... You love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Because you belong to Jesus, there is an inward rejoicing. There is a joy that is unspeakable, that is inexpressible. 
it can get so high and so strong on you sometimes that almost you just want to scream like with an ecstatic joy and shout, God, I love you so much. Jesus, I praise you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And so it's a joy that you can't even really get it out in words, which is sometimes why you have to maybe like dance or just like you, 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 maybe you almost feel drunk and you fall out on the floor. I don't know. I don't know. Praise God. But you do your best to release that. And you're full of glory. Full of the new wine. Thank you Lord Jesus. You have to let it out. Praise the Lord. Maybe lay your hands on somebody. Thank you Jesus. And then we have Psalm 126. Verse 1. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion. We were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. And our tongue with singing. Now, God's going to make you laugh. When you are joyful, you're happy, there's a lot of laughing going on. And what happens is that you want to sing songs to the Lord. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. And you know what? They're going to say that about you. But they're going to see you're laughing. They're going to see your joy. Not a depressed state of moaning and groaning. But a true joy. A true spirit of a conqueror. More than a conqueror. The spirit of faith. And a person who has now been made strong. God can turn the weak into uh, people of great strength who are even leaders. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Laughing. Then our mouth was filled with laughter. Praise God. Just go ahead and laugh right now. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Woo, God is good. Ha, ha, ha. Praise the Lord. You know, the old devil told me. A few weeks back, he said, you're not going to see that money come in to pay that land off. It's not going to happen. I said, it's going to happen. And he would say, oh, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But you know what? I would just laugh, and I would get into the Word. And the more I got into the Word, it would just build such joy. And every morning, I'd jump out of bed and say, that land's paid off. That land is paid off. Hallelujah. And now the money is in the bank, and the land is being paid off. Praise God. Laughter. Then your mouth will be filled with laughter. You can just go ahead and start laughing right now. God gives you permission to laugh right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Psalm 2. Laughing is certainly something that is not foreign to the Lord. Verse 1. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Let's lock all the people down and make them eat crickets and uh, make them not be able to travel and let them not have any fun. Praise the Lord that we have a lot of that talk going on today, don't we? Pastor Stephen, what does God do when he hears that, that conversation taking place against, uh, uh, amongst the billionaires of the world and global leaders? What does he do? Chew his fingernails? No, he laughs. He who laughs, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. He completely laughs them and thinks it's complete nonsense. It's total rubbish, and he laughs at it. Praise the Lord. You know, here, uh, if you're flying on the airplane and you're just about to land, the stewardess comes along and says, uh, uh, trash, trash, and you put your trash in the bag. Well, over in uh, Europe, you know, they, uh, if you're flying there and they have a British flight crew, they say, you know, rubbish. You put your, stuff, your trash in the rubbish. But uh, we were on the train in uh, England traveling around by train. And there was a lady that was uh, going through the middle of the train, you know, through the aisles, had this big bag. And I, I, I think she was probably from Eastern Europe or somewhere and had moved to, uh, you know, moved to England. And she's saying, ah, oh, rubbish, ah, oh, rubbish. I said, uh, Kelly, what is that woman saying? And Kelly said, I think she's saying rubbish. And that, but, but she would say, ah, rubbish. But you know what? That's what God says. It's just all rubbish. It's a bunch of trash and he laughs hallelujah oh pastor Steve, that's not nice of God God doesn't have to apologize for anybody for what he does God laughs at these silly people that think they can prevail over the church God's anointed ones not a chance hallelujah the gates of hell will not prevail against the church and we're on the advance and there's people all over the world just like us by the hundreds of millions praise God and while things will continue to increase in the earth of dark and lawlessness, yet the glory will get stronger.
stronger and stronger upon God's people till we shine like stars in the night. Praise God. And the church will be respected in the last days. Mm -mm. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo, praise God. I believe I hear God laughing right now at all the crazy plans of the enemy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. You know, one of the greatest things that you can do to uh, uh, disrespect the devil, who wants to be taken so seriously, is to laugh when he says something to you. Ha, 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 ha. You, you don't even have to kind of like reply back, you know, you know, or there's just laugh in a sense. Because if a person wants to be taken serious when they're talking, the greatest sign of disrespect is to actually laugh at them. And so, you know, just laugh. Be like God. We are made in His image. We are His children. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, very quickly, let me share five reasons why we must rejoice. My friends, number one, lack of joy will lead to a loss of access to God's beautiful and calming presence. You know, uh, from Psalm 16, Verse 11, we know that in the Lord's presence is what? Fullness of joy. So if you get away from His presence, uh, you're going to lose that joy. So you want to keep that joy there all the time. We know also from the Psalms that God inhabits, dwells in the praises of His people. You know, when you praise the Lord, you actually traumatize the devil. You actually cause demons who are assigned to you uh, and would try to radiate around your realm and find a way in. You actually cause them to get hopelessly depressed when you praise the Lord. When you praise God and exhibit that joyful praise, the demons just get so depressed, they, uh, uh, they just they can't stand it. They, it completely demoralizes them. Praise God. Well, we want to keep joy going because it's through that presence of the Lord that we experience fresh breakthroughs. So joy paves the way for God's presence to be continually in our lives. Um, look, just like you would never want to be continually around a depressed person who's always gloomy, always unbelieving, always complaining, neither does the Lord. Mm -mm. The cinnamon smell is continuing to increase in here. Praise God. Okay, so uh, lack of joy will lead to a loss of access to God's presence. Number two, a lack of joy will lead to a loss of revelation. And we see this in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 12, and uh, this is verse 3. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. So you're drawing water, and water is a representation of the Word of God, and you draw it out of the wells. But how do you do it? How do you keep getting fresh revelation from the Word? You have to do it joyfully. You have to have a joyful, happy heart, and when you do, the revelation will keep on flowing. And actually, let me just say this. The more joyful you are, the greater to access you have to revelation in the scriptures. And the more revelation you have, the greater ability you have to move up to new levels. Woo! So stay joyful. Stay joyful. Praise the Lord. I know it's a fight. And I know just like the Apostle Paul, who went through many trials and difficulties, yet he said, rejoice evermore. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, number three, why must we rejoice? Because joy is a facilitator of health and wholeness. Look at this in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A merry heart does good like medicine. So a joyful or a merry heart, it does good like medicine. You know, uh, Kelly's mother, her name is Mary Hart, and she's always been one of the funniest uh, happiest people. She has her uh, struggles at times, just like anybody, but she uh, has that name, and often God gives you a, 
a certain name for a reason. And sometimes parents give you a name and they don't, they don't even understand why. And maybe the name that you were given was so different than what your brothers or sisters got. And sometimes God can move prophetically even through unsaved parents or parents that might not even uh, be familiar with the moving of the Spirit, but yet you were given that name. And sometimes there can be a prophetic element of your identity through that name. And Kelly's mother, her name is Mary Hart. And uh, while she's Catholic, she has always loved my preaching, and she always says, oh, Stephen, I love your preaching, I love your teaching, and it, you know, it makes her laugh, and she is a very joyful person to be around. The, whenever there's a family type event, she's there, there's always laughing. My friends, a merry heart does good like medicine. Praise the Lord. The more joyful you are, the healthier your life will be. Praise God. But a broken spirit dries the bones. Praise God. God's going to keep you in that, that oil of gladness. You know, let me prophesy to some of you. You will never, ever have a mental breakdown. There have been people throughout uh, uh, various times when maybe there's a, a economic recession or maybe there's great turmoil in their life and they're faced with great trials and some have had uh, mental breakdowns and things along that line. You never will. Even if somebody in your family did, even if your parents did, that will never ever touch you. Why? You've got too much joy. You've got too much of that oil of gladness all over you. And a merry heart does good like medicine. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Number four, without joy, we lose our access into the realm of supernatural divine intervention. And we do see this in the life of Habakkuk. Chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold. Oh, oh, Pastor Stephen, this is not sounding good, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will, yes, Pastor Stephen, I will complain and say this is really bad. We need to watch the evening news to see how this unfolds. No! Thank God that Habakkuk was a prophet, and he said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Woo! Well, Pastor Stephen, we're not supposed to do that. The news is trying to pull us all down. That's why I don't, I don't listen to it at all. <laughs> Any news I get, I get secondhand. And if you listen to that, it will send radioactive, depressing elements that will, that will eat away at the um, miracle fabric of your faith. I don't listen to that junk. You know, Smith Wigglesworth would not allow the newspaper ever into his home. When Lester Sumrall, the young apostle, came to a visit Smith Wigglesworth, uh, Lester Sumrall had the newspaper under his arm, and uh, he began to walk into Wigglesworth's home. And Wigglesworth said, what's that under your arm? He said, it's the newspaper. He said, you're not allowed to bring that into my house. It's lies, all lies. And you know what? A hundred years have gone by, and it hasn't changed. It's all kind of lies and stuff designed to put you in fear. Throw it away. Praise God. Amen. And keep your faith high. And you have a reason to rejoice. Why? You have a covenant that will keep you up, even if others are having the most difficult time of their life. You know, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand because you're a covenant child, though it will not come near you. Through the covenant, you are exempted through what all those others must pass through. The covenant will take care of you. Your story is different. And your testimony is also very, very different. Mm -mm. So Habakkuk said, despite all this crazy stuff, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And then he goes on to talk about deliverance. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high heels. I'm not down in that valley of depression with everybody else. God's my deliverer. And I praise him even when all this other stuff is swirling around. God will always take care of you keep your joy up that's where your strength is at number five lack of joy will rob a believer of the rewards of their service to the Lord this is heavyweight this is very very important Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 
47 and 48. Hold on to your seat with this one. God says, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart. Did you catch that? With joy, Pastor Shema, I serve God, but did you do it with joy and gladness? Okay, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. Watch out for complaining in the camp. Praise God. Woo! Praise the Lord. And serve the Lord joyfully. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I didn't grow up in a sense behind a pulpit. I've said that many times. But God would lift me up. And God would lift me up. And I, there was a time I would clean the toilets in the church for my pastor. And I would, I would, uh, uh, I would take the, um, the polish, the, the pledge lemon orange polish. And I would take cloths. And I would polish every single pew in the church. And I would vacuum all the carpets in the church. I had no idea that even God had a ministry for me. This is the farthest thing from my mind. But I did it with such joy. And me and one of the other deacons, old Deacon Mac, we were the first ones in. Uh, we unlocked the church, and we were the last ones out after everybody else. And we loved it. We loved it. We were just so happy to be able to serve in the Lord. It's an honor and a privilege to be involved in God's eternal plan. Praise God. Serve the Lord with joyfulness and a gladness of heart. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My friends, your labor will not be in vain. Now, get ready to receive a fresh baptism of joy. Are you ready? If you're able, I want to ask you to even stand up. Lift up your hands. Praise the Lord. Now, if you're driving in a car or something like that, keep your hands on the steering wheel. That oil will begin to flow as you go. If you get a little bit topsy-turvy, pull over. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Here it comes. Father, I thank you for your people. I pray that, oh God, that right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you send that oil of gladness upon their heads, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Touch them with it. Let it begin to flow now. Hit them with it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that you're healing broken hearts right now. You're healing the pain. Some of you, you're watching and you had a loved one go on to heaven. God says you'll see that person again. Let that oil now begin to heal your heart and get back up and engage into God's plan for your life. Amen. Praise God. Some of you, you've had words spoken again against you that crippled you. You could walk fine. There's nothing wrong with your body, but those words crippled your potential and you have not risen past what was spoken. But God pulls out those poison darts right now and pours in the oil of joy. It's time for you to laugh and jump into your destiny. Look, you can actually see your future right now. It's a golden path and it's leading up. Take it. Take it and laugh and rejoice because God is restoring back to you everything that the devil has stolen. Woo! Praise God. Yes, you get the last laugh. Praise God, just like God does. Father, let the oil flow in the name of Jesus, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you're watching today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and you've never surrendered your life to Him, today you need to get your life right with God so you can escape from hell and go to heaven and receive the life that God wants you to live. Now, if you're also listening to me and you used to follow Jesus, but you went off into the dark side, come back right now and get let the, let the Lord restore you back to the joy of your salvation. I want to pray for you also. Now, let us pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash all of my sins away with your precious blood. Jesus, write my name in your book of life. I give my life to you completely. Step into my life and lead me and guide me. From this day forward, thank you for saving me. In your name I pray, amen and amen. See, the joy's there right now, isn't it? It's there right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to laugh all the way to heaven.
Mm -mm. Yes, we have trials. Yes, we have challenges. Yes, we face uh, all of these things, the enemy and spiritual wickedness and all of that. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And the joy of the Lord truly is our strength. Praise God. Now, let's take Holy Communion together. I want you to grab some unleavened bread, grab a cracker, grab some grape juice. If you've never done this before and you are a believer, uh, uh, hit pause and make the run. Grab you some uh, apple juice or grape juice, preferably grape juice, but if you don't have it, grab what you've got. Grab a cracker and come on. If you're a believer, you can take Holy Communion together. This is a part of fulfilling righteousness. You're supposed to take communion. Why, Pastor Stephen? Because God, God's Word says to. <laughs> Praise God. We don't just read the Bible. We, we read it and do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you for this bread and juice. Through this prayer, we bless it. We now set it apart as being holy. And we thank you that this is the flesh and blood of Jesus. Father, as we receive the Lord's body... We thank you for joy unspeakable. We thank you for joy inexpressible in the morning, at night. And Father, we stir it up. We stir it up. And we thank you for that, that flow. We thank you for that flow. We thank you for that liberty, the freedom, the sing songs to you. To even dance. Maybe not even in public, but in private. Maybe and also at times in public. All by the anointing of your spirit. But we thank you for freedom. Freedom in the Holy Spirit. The drink the new wine. Now, Father, thank you for strength in Jesus' name. Let us now receive the Lord's body together. Praise God. Praise God. God's poured into your bosom. Praise the Lord. God's poured in blessings. God's poured in the joy, the oil. Mm -mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you that we will keep the flame burning. We're not going to be Christians that get all cold and fuddy-duddy. We're going to stay on fire, and we're going to help each other to stay on fire. And if we see any Christian icicles, we're going to get them thawed out. Father, we just thank you. We now receive the precious, protective cleansing blood of Jesus. We thank you that we belong to you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive together. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Well, my friends, before I say goodbye, let me say thank you again to everybody who sowed into the Feast of Tabernacles special project of seeing the field of dreams paid for, the money is in the bank. The full amount to pay it off, and it will be fully paid. Praise God. And I'm praying for you. And let me just say that Pastor Kelly and I and our entire team here at SBI, we love you. We're praying for you. And again, I'm so glad that you're in my life. I, when I looked at the giving, when I, and I saw every individual giving that came in, whether it was online or mailed in. I saw all of it. And I just say, Lord, thank you for this precious person, one at a time. Thank you for them. And I'm so glad that you're in my life, and that you're in my world. Praise God. And if I never see you on this side, many of you I will, but I'll certainly see you when we get up there. Praise God. Father, bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week. I'll see you back. Real soon.